Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters from Kenya, Africa, and around the world, welcome to yet another exciting edition of Check In. And today, uh, the boy child is outnumbered for a very good reason, which we're going to explain shortly. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having tuned in uh, this whole time. Uh, this is, I think, our fourth or third or fourth fourth or fifth uh, check-in session, and we are glad that you're with us today. Now we are going to talk about uh, seven flames that uh, proceed from our tongue, which need to be put out today in the name of Jesus. The title for today's discussion is Say What? And we are going to uh, discuss these seven uh, things. Number one, gossip. Two, slander. Three, criticism four, lying, five, exaggeration, six, cursing, seven, blasphemy. Why are we talking about these things? Well, this uh, past uh, Sunday at House of Transformation Nairobi, we had the Super Sunday service and Bishop Alois Rutivi ministered powerfully on uh, a sermon titled, A Sure Foundation. Now, upon Danny, he mentioned that in order for us to ensure that we are built on a sure foundation, we need to uh, make sure that whatever is within us, whatever is within us is uh, surely built. And he said, some of the things that uh, cause us to, uh, uh, to crumble even as a fellowship from within are some of these things. And he mentioned, he said, look at you, uh, you're gossiping. Look at you, uh, you're just talking about men of God behind their backs. No, no, akata chini chini. He mentioned that if you were there on Sunday, if you watched the live stream, watu chini chini. So these seven things: gossip, slander, criticism, lying, exaggeration, cursing, and blasphemy. We are going to uh, 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 make sure that uh, we uh, put these uh, things, evil things, in a coffin and we bury them, so that as a fellowship. Tutakuwa uh, strong, and we are going to uh, make sure that that rot that is inside the fellowship, inside our groups, at our places of work, uh, we ensure that we are not, um, uh, we do not damage um, that which we are building, so that uh, our lives, our fellowships, our families will be built on a sure foundation. So at this point in time, I'm going to welcome uh, the panel today. And as you can see in a moment, uh, it's predominantly uh, ladies. I am the only gentleman here. Now, the reason why we have ladies uh, in the house today is because we are going to talk about gossip, slander, and exaggeration. Then um, the gentlemen, we are going to have our session another day and talk about the other things. So at this point in time, I would like to invite uh, Ashley, my very able co-host, uh, to pick it up from there and let's get the conversation going. Ashley. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Today it's a very interesting topic that we have here. But and um, just as Mark said, Bishop already um, started this discussion on Sunday or actually just talked about it and then uh, it was in our hearts to continue this conversation because it's important. And it's a lot. It's a lot of the things that Mark has listed. We find ourselves falling victim, especially um, as ladies. Um, at least for the first three that Mark has, has mentioned that we're talking about today, which is um, gossip, <laughs> which comes very easy for us. We don't necessarily even plan that. Oh, let's go and gossip. But somehow we find ourselves in that, um, you know, kind of environment. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for, for always being loyal to check in. We pray that you'll be blessed today, that this will not just be a talking session or something we do by routine, but it shall be something that will bless your heart and uh, that we shall live out of. By the end of this session, you shall be blessed. So please feel free to comment. Um, if you have anything to comment about in the comment section, remember you're talking about gossip, you're talking about lying, you're talking about exaggeration. So if any of these things are familiar to you or if you have any comment concerning them, please share them. We'd be happy to hear from you. Um, also hit the like button. Don't forget to share with your friend and invite um, someone that you'd like to watch this session with. 
So uh, at this point in time, I'd like to welcome our panel. We have very um, lovely ladies joining us today. Um, we have Madam Nancy. Um, we have uh, Sister Jackie, <laughs> not my mom, but uh, another Jackie, a very um, young, vibrant woman. And uh, we also have Mackenzie um, joining us today. Mackenzie is making a big comeback. She was last in check-in, I think, a year ago or more. So Mackenzie, welcome back. Jackie, you were with us in check-in just a few weeks ago, and we are very happy to have you again. So Karibu, um, we look forward to hearing from you. Back to you, Mark. Wonderful. Now, ladies, we uh, have a great task here at hand, and uh, this is a very sensitive, uh, very sensitive topic. We have seen uh, fellowships, we have seen uh, uh, groups, we have seen companies uh, uh, crumble or, you know, just be not function at the optimum level because of these things. We have seen people even leave church because something was said about them. And, uh, you know, as the Bible says, you know, uh, offenses, offenses must come, but uh, woe unto him uh, uh, through which offenses come. And uh, the Lord also mentioned uh, the issue of uh, uh, if you offend any of these little ones. So there are some people who are very sensitive. They, you can say anything about me and I won't leave church, but there are people who are, it's so, uh, they're very sensitive to, to things that are, uh, are, are said about them. Uh, you know, things that are untrue and whatnot, but we want to ensure that we uh, nip this thing in the bud. So I would like to uh, open uh, the discussion with uh, Mary. So there is this scripture in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20, and it says, um, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Then Proverbs 18 verse 21 says, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh, they that uh, love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mary, let us start with uh, gossip, okay? So the definition is uh, it's casual or unconstrained conversations about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed to being true. Now, is it just a lady's thing Ladies, indulge me. Let's start with Mary. What is the problem? Is it just a lady's thing? Is it a, like a, a gifting? You just feel it's boiling, Daniako. Uh, indulge me, ladies. What, what, what's up? <laughs> oh, uh, thank you so much, Mark, for the invitation. And Ashley, yeah, it's been a while, but I'm glad to be here and uh, grateful for just the opportunity to to continue ministering to one another. And uh, it's a great opportunity that we have been given the check-in and uh, let's keep learning from it. Uh, gossip, as they have said, is either two things. You either exaggerate things or you just give information that is not necessary. And I'll start and say, ladies, we might be the biggest victim because they say we have a thousand and one words. So you tend to just find yourself speaking and, uh, and as in the name of stories and you end up giving information that is not supposed to be out there. That does not necessarily mean that we are the only ones who do it. Even the guys I'm sure also do it. And um, I'm reminded of... Uh, several things that can cause us to somehow like uh, start doing gossip when you're given information and maybe you're overwhelmed by it and you start sharing. So um, I think we need to, to see how not to do it, but to answer your question, I believe it's both, but ladies have more words, so they tend to say more that is than necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, from what you're saying, uh, is at least you have admitted that uh, it's more more or less a, a ladies a ladies thing. Now I'd like to move to the to the second uh, issue, Jackie. Uh, please indulge me in this. Huh? Now, 
the 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 person that is the gossip now let's let's uh, just uh, go into the mind of the gossip what would you say is there when you see someone go is there something more does it uh, mean that there is something behind what does it say about the character of this person uh, jackie uh good evening thank you once more for inviting me to share and to discuss uh, the things that are affecting the church and i'm really thankful to god for that uh, before i answer your question let me just tell you that from research is it detected that men gossip is worse than women gossip so <laughs> take a note of that as we speak loudly you you speak under the water so it moves faster so <laughs> back to what you back to what you had asked um uh, uh i i i always try to, uh, to base my answers uh, on bible so i will refer much on the book of proverbs which talks about wisdom so one of the characteristics that proverbs gives concerning people who gossip is worthless he said a worthless man and then now it talks about gossip so one of the character that that person has is worthlessness number two they are idle they are idle because i would imagine uh, gossip comes out of the abundance of the heart it's, it's not something that you think right now and you start doing it's something that you've manufactured inside you thought about it you added sugar and salt then now it's just pouring out back to mark where 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 where, where? We, it's just by five minutes into the nini and it's already intense so you say it is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks wonderful wonderful so it tells uh, it tells uh, a lot about what someone is harboring in their in their hearts uh, listeners and our viewers i hope you're taking note i like the conversation that we are seeing in the in the chat room let's keep it going now um, ashley i i want to um, uh, throw it over to you to take it from there um i'm just looking at the chat box uh, mm -hmm. and <laughs> let me allow me to just read to you a comment mm -hmm. um from sister joyce she says that ladies give more det <laughs> details when it comes to gossip and um um a gentleman called isaac just said men just say the truth ladies exaggerate <laughs> so but okay so i i when it comes to gossip i i don't think it's just exaggerated truths that we we share i think for us most of the time we find ourselves um giving just as as jackie has said and she spoke very well she said it's idle talk and and the bible actually covers this it says we shall account for every idle word that you speak um on the day of judgment yeah so we shall account for every idle word that we speak it doesn't have to be a truth or a, it doesn't matter whether it's a truth or a lie it's idle it's, it's unnecessary as jackie said so even if i'm telling someone a truth about them sometimes um we have to ask ourselves is this necessary you know is this something that is going to build someone is it some what am i gaining out of this and this is these are things that i i ask myself a couple of times when because um i find it very interesting how guys don't find themselves susceptible to you know the temptations of gossip i i, I find it very interesting because i'll just give a scenario i work um in the department where i serve a church it's full of guys and uh, there's a friend of mine who's very impressive if you start a conversation about someone he just blacks out and it's not it's not that he's he is not in, it's not even that he's cognizant of oh you know i should not speak about this person he just doesn't care and he will not indulge and i think this myself and a few ladies were talking to each other the other day and we're just telling ourselves that imagine if you had that ability to just black out of a conversation when it be as soon as it begins you just don't care but it's so juicy often times you know that we find ourselves deeply you know by the time you realize that it's gossip you're already into deep but um with that let's go to the next question 
So I'd like to take this one um, to Madam, Madam Nancy. So Madam Nancy, what does all this say about, um, Mark actually has talked about this, what does this say about um, um, a gossip character? But now let's go to the next one. If someone is gossiping with you, it's highly, it's highly likely that they will gossip about you. What do you make of this statement, Madam Nancy? Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, Mark, and uh, the panelists and the guests for this invitation. I must say I'm excited to be here. It's my first time, although I've watched a few people indulge in this. And uh, this topic is very interesting. As Ashley had indicated, it's quite wide. And uh, one of the issues that uh, affect us, I can say, on daily basis. From the genesis of it, into the root of it, into the spreading of it, it affects a Christian, I think, to say the least, every day. And uh, does the... Uh, and, and how, actually you've asked about uh, if someone is gossiping with you, it's highly likely that he will gossip about you. That's very true. I was just looking, when Mark talked to me about this, I was just looking into what are the issues surrounding gossip and uh, probably the genesis or how it started. And I, I, I interestingly noted that actually gossip is, is uh, from the ancient day, gossip is not a bad thing. <laughs> I, 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 however, uh, it is how it has evolved and turned out to be. Because uh, initially gossip, gossip, gossip in those days, it was looked like uh, something that brought close families together close families in terms of father, mother, and children. And so after the day, they would sit together and just say how their day was. You know, the modern catching up, I would say. But then in the 19th century, gossip has evolved. And this is when now it seemed like women are people who stay at home more. And when we say stay at home more, it meant that the father has left or the husband has left, it, may, it meant the boy child has gone to work. And so who remained at home, they were girls. It evolved, you know, when you talk to somebody too much, you will talk to a neighbor, it grew into friendship. And that is now how it, it, it brought in the negative aspect of it. Because the moment it crossed the borders to a neighbor, you would want to find out how people are doing. And then from there, it became a, a, a vice in the sense that now women started spending a lot of time with their friends and forgetting their homely duties. We bought something called the gossip. When you talk about gossip, uh, a gossiper is somebody who talks another person, to, uh, who talks about another person. In other words, the other person is basically you because you are the other person to the other person. I don't know whether that has been uh, understood, but uh, what, I'm, what I mean is, if I talk about you, Ashley, it means I, you, I can talk about Ashley to somebody else. And so, and uh, it, it becomes more like uh, a chain because they, we, we've been told eh, he, who to who, he who talks, to you about others. They also tell them about you. So gossip is a chain. It is a, it's a, it's a, I don't know how to call it. It's, it, it's an entanglement. <laughs> you talk about, nobody can ever come to you and tell you actually did this, this, this. Chances are that gossip must go back because Ashley will say something. Ashley may be quiet. Ashley may react negatively. And that is how it just grows the chain. So somebody who talks to you about somebody else will definitely or may have definitely talked to that other person about you. That's my take. And, wow. and uh, yes, mm -hmm. I want to refer to a verse. Eh? Okay, go ahead. I tied to that and it was quite interesting. I found it in Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13. And it says, besides, 
they get into a habit of being idle. I think uh, Sister Mackenzie talked about idleness and going about from house to house. Now we can, uh, we can relate that with the women, why it is so much aligned to that, to that, uh, to that gender. And not only do they become idlers, but also busy bodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. That is Paul in the book of First Timothy 5 and verse 13. Wow, wonderful. That is so powerful. So you're saying it is an entanglement. This thing, you think that you are, uh, once I, I give you some information that we will, the both of us will be faithful to keep it uh, among ourselves. It doesn't work that way with the uh, sin. And thank you so much for, uh, for shedding light on that. I didn't know that it has evolved. Uh, as we've just found things, uh, we have found things are uh, blown out of proportion. Now we want to look at um, some of the dire consequences of, of, of gossip and the death that comes with it. Now, uh, one, we see people distancing themselves from, let's say, a fellowship or a group of friends. For instance, now in our fellowship, they distance themselves from the fellowship due to the shame that came out of uh, a sensitive issue that was uh, discussed about them. Number two, the addiction. This is another dangerous thing, the addiction. You just can't help but, uh, uh, you know, catch up with, and social media is making it no, no, no easier. Number three, we are seeing uh, people now tend to uh, keep burning issues uh, to themselves because of the fear of uh, if I share it with Mary McKenzie, if I share it with Jackie, uh, they are going to, you know, what Akua must spread up. So we see people in church, uh, they can't even talk to the duty pastors, they can't talk to the bishop because and so they just keep it within themselves and they suffer in silence. The other one is the, the final thing, the final dangerous thing is that we don't know that we are going to give an account of every word that we are going to, every idle word we are going to give an account. So I would like to ask you, Jackie, just uh, as we wrap up uh, the, the, the gossip section, how can we overcome this as a fellowship, Jackie? Thank you, Mark. Um, how I will wish to refer to what Bishop has, has been speaking in the uh, several weeks back. And even last Sunday, he actually also spoke about that concerning us building a firm foundation. And in building this firm foundation, he actually encouraged us to search ourselves, not our neighbors. You know, the thing is, we are busy searching our neighbors and filling soil in, their, in, the, in, the, in the ditches they have dug, dug for their foundations. And uh, they are not growing because you, you are busy. They are trying to put up a foundation. You are busy filling it with soil. If we only focus on, on working our own salvation, if we only, I only focus like I, Jackie, I, because no, nobody is yet there. We are still working our own salvation. We are still have very, various things that we need to work on. So if we concentrate much on searching ourselves and, uh, and uh, more on working our own salvation, it will quite help. And I'll also refer to... Uh, 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 a verse in Romans 12, verse 2, it says that be, con be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jackie. Very uh, plain and simple. It starts from uh, searching ourselves. I think it's uh, either Psalm 138 or Psalm 139 that talks about um, you know us searching, searching our hearts. Thank you so much. It starts from within. So um, you also please uh, look out for Pastor Jonathan's uh, sermon that he preached this past Wednesday. Go back uh, on our YouTube channel. He talked about the candle and the broom. So he talked about the candle being the light. Go and shed light inside that heart of yours and see whether uh, whatever you're saying, whatever we go on talking about is really right. Now I'd like us to move on to the, to the second thing here uh, in our discussion. And this is slander. Uh, we want to demystify uh, how different it is from gossip and the rest of the things. Now I heard that, uh, uh, I had someone once say that slander is um, 
uh, using words as bullets and assassinating someone. It is character assassination. Juya wivu, juya sjui nini, we are going to look at that now. So it's the action or crime of making a false uh, spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. And this has been uh, uh, termed by some scholars, as I've said, char as character assassination. Now, again, why? Why, why is this happening uh, in the fellowship? What is wrong? Ashley, please take it up from there. Thank you, Mark. Um, Landa, as Mark has said, uh, yeah, is um, equivalent to character assassination. It might not, um, the other person might not know about it, but that doesn't take away the, you know, the grave nature of the, of the attack. And, um, and there's, no, there's no innocence in slander. You know, gossip could be, um, could be arrived from a point of innocence. You know, you start a discussion on something and then um, suddenly you're talking, you know, you cross the line of gossip. But this is, um, it starts with the intention. This one, as Mark has said, it's ill intended. It has a motive. There's a motive that comes from within. So by the time you're speaking some, something about someone, you've um, baked it inside. You've come up with the you know ingredients and all these type of things, and you've concocted something that is going to hurt someone. So I'd li just like to ask uh, Mackenzie to shed some light on this. Mackenzie, what would bring someone to a point where they would want to assassinate someone's character? What is it that is within a person that will cause them to get to this point where they speak evil and, and you know they they want to damage your reputation by speaking things that are not true concerning you. Uh, thank you, Ashley, for that. Uh, I'll I'll take it to the beginning. Yeah? Since the fall of man, even the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. And this is an innate human nature that we have of um it comes naturally. And that means that even as a believer or as a human, or even just generally as a human being, you have to consciously um, seek to do good and to do the right thing. But one thing I've also, I would say is uh, for you to be so intentional in ruining someone's reputational character, it speaks a lot about who, who you are, how confident you are in who you are, and um, what, what spirit or what moves your mind. Eh? If I am confident in who I am as Mackenzie, I do not see the need to, to bring Ashley down. If I have fallen down because of actions I have done in the past, I will extend a lot of grace to Ashley because I know the ability to do wrong is something that is very, that comes easily. So when it when it comes when it comes to even slander, leave alone even gossip, even gossip, slander, whatever, you should search yourself and find out what is it in you that makes the, the searching of the heart and what makes you feel so bad, and why, and what is lacking in you that makes you compensate in making other people feel bad, instead of us lifting one another, encouraging one another. Uh, being gracious to one another, we find ourselves uh, the, having that intention of actually making Ashley feel bad or painting Ashley in a certain light. And this reminds me of what Bishop was speaking about two weeks ago, wisdom. Wisdom is just a matter of knowing when, how, and where. And the grace that, the, the, the grace that comes with Jesus Christ, just knowing that, this thing can happen to anyone and you make a conscious effort to always see people in that light, in the light that Jesus sees us, that, you know, we are all in this pursuit to do right. Sometimes we will fall, but that should not de depict who we are. All of us have done mistakes in the past, have done wrong things in the past. And so why should you feel like, because today it's Mary or it's Jackie, that this should become a big thing. And worse off, if actually Ashley or Jackie have not done what you purport them to have done. 
Hey, Mackenzie, thank you so much. You are asking someone how confident are they in who they are. So that is one major problem, an identity crisis. You feel like someone is, uh, you know, uh, you're inferior to other people. Job said, I am not inferior to you. Or even your inferiority complex that, you know, uh, prompts people into, into, you know, into assassinating other people's character. Thank you so much for that, uh, Mary. I hope people, uh, viewers and listeners, you are taking uh, note of this. Now, Jackie, I want you to indulge me on this. The gratification, the reward that a slanderer seeks to have. Let's uh, just try and get into the mind of a slanderer and see and tell us what is this reward that they are seeking and you know does it really is it really worth it jackie now uh what the what they seek is a perception as mary has explained when for example i i, I look at ashley i'm like I'm envying her for this duty that he has in check-in uh, because may, probably I have no duty in church. I'm a backbencher in church. Now I'm, I, I, I think like, no, no, I want to see Ashley uh, like me. Like, yo, uzuri yake yote nyano nekaniwa ishuke chini. You know, it's a perception in my mind because the moment I bring Ashley down, we don't become equal. I become worse. So I don't think there's any satisfaction. It's a perceived su satisfaction, but it's not an actual satisfaction. Hey, well said. So it's just like a shadow that people are chasing. Children of God, let us, um, let us really examine ourselves. I'm going to post a, a scripture that is a prayer that we're going to, to make all of us um, just as a fellowship to ensure that the things that Bishop was talking about uh, you know, having a sure foundation. We take care of these things early, early in the year so that um, we ensure that we have a, a strong uh, body of Christ uh, and a strong army that we are raising in these, in these last days. So, um, um, Madam Nancy, I, I would like to uh, um, have you bring uh, this uh, uh, particular subtopic to a close and, uh, uh, on, and is with this question, how do you redeem we might be just, uh, you know, hammering these people, hammering the gossips, the slanderers. How do we redeem? How do you redeem such a person? Let's say this is someone that is in the in the fellowship, someone of your acquaintance. How do we uh, redeem someone with such a rotten mouth? Thank you, thank you so much, Mark. Um, there are two. There are two aspects or. Uh, two people that are affected by slander. The person who slanders has a problem. And the person who you are slandering, you know, the person who you, you are maligning their name, you are trying to bring down, there is also how you speak to their, to their esteem, to their personality, and it brings about destruction. I was referring to the book because I wanted to just find out how does this affect a fellowship? How does it affect an individual, both sides, that person that is being slandered and the person who is slandering? And I realized it, it, is, it is something that, 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 that is actually, is a circle. It affects everybody. And it also affects those people who are out. For instance, in a fellowship, like Sister Jackie has said, you are there and, uh, and uh, Ashley is doing well. Ashley is very good in media. She's running up and down. She's committed to her work. And you pass and you hear somebody complimenting Ashley. Wow, that girl is so committed. She's so nice. And in your envy, because that is what drives, what drives this. Uh, I was reading the book of uh, Romans 1, 29 and 31. And uh, the attributes of the characteristics of a slanderer are all there. It is a spirit. It says they are filled with unrighteousness. Now those people who slander, they are filled with unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, 
murder, strife, disease. There are so many. And, and, and you realize a slanderer is a person who has issues, who has, say, I, I would say, like, uh, uh, from a psychological point, he has a self, he or, ha, or he has a very low self-esteem. To an extent, you feel that if I, I, I cut off Mark, I'll stand. You realize what Mark is standing on is a different thing. He's, he's on a very different foundation. Probably Mark is, because a slanderer has a spirit of unrighteousness in him. Mark could not be having that. Mark is righteous. So you cannot cut Mark off or down for you to be righteous. It is evil. And therefore, how, how do we redeem ourselves? How do we redeem those that are affected, both sides, both to the person that is, a, that is being slandered and the person who is spreading or maliciously destroying people's name? One is to talk to them. Firstly, me as a slanderer, you need to find a way. And this is found in, 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 in what we've been taught, the wisdom. You as a person who is strong, because we have also been told that you be strong so that even the weak ones can look or can hold on to you. You, the person who, who is strong, who has come to the knowledge that slander is sin, will come to me and tell me, by the way, Nancy, some of the things that you say or whatever you said about Ashley is not actually good. And this is how she feels about it. This is how your words or whatever you said, ABCD, has affected the whole fellowship. This is how, this is why Pastor So and so is not coming to church. Because slander destroy families, they destroy the church, and knowing very well that uh, families are the foundation of every society, the moment, especially in church, the moment this spirit comes in, you realize people will start, some will stand, but others will start moving out, some will withdraw to themselves, and therefore it brings disunity, it brings distraction. When you look at uh, the book of uh, Psalms 101, the, the Lord says, whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Why distractions comes to a slanderer? One person who slanders another person, it's because of the effect it has to the bigger society. And therefore, it is important for a Christian to confront Confront does not necessarily mean you fight, you quarrel, or no. You approach that person, you approach me and tell me, by the way, your words are affecting that other party in this negative way. We are in touch. Is it possible we can pray or work around these things so that whatever we are doing, because you know, you, you can never, you can never be together with a person. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, with that spirit and agree. And the spirit of God most so does not, sweat, does not dwell in that kind of environment. So one is to, to, to speak about it, to confront it. Secondly, the people who, who have been affected by the words of others, the people who have been cut by, by, by others in, in the society, you encourage them. You encourage them through what? You encourage them through prayer and give words of affirmation. Sometimes you realize in, in our setups, there are so many issues. And one thing that somebody may just want to hear after, after his name or her name has been maliciously destroyed outside there, that there is somebody who still believes in them, that whatever was said was not right. You can tell that person, Ashley, I don't think whatever was said actually is right or, or, or can affect you. This is how I feel about you. You are strong in this area. You are better. And whatever you are doing is good. You encourage that person so that, again, you get them to the knowledge that this person, you know, whatever they are saying is driven by evil, is driven by ill. So you confront by firstly rebuking it. Then you confront secondly by encouraging. And then, of course, what we are saying about all these Slander starts and ends with you. It starts with me and ends with me. So
So before I feel, before I get out of my house to go and slander, I should think about it. And for me, that is what it is all about. Is what I'm going to say about uh, uh, Sister Mackenzie good? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it in any way edifying? If not, I should stop and sit in my house. And with the moment I sit in my house or wherever I am, it means I've cut off slander. That's what I would, I would say. And maybe for reference, we can just refer to the book of Ezekiel 22 and verse 9. And also James 4 and 11. Thank you. I hope I answered that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you have. You just reminded me of a scripture here uh, in Jude. Jude uh, 1 verse, verse 21, 22, 23, uh, where you've talked about us reaching out to people, to other people um, who are slandering and, and all that. Jude uh, 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and to eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So actually, uh, Madam Nancy, you are actually uh, spot on. We need to be able to approach people. And uh, this verse from Judah has shown us the way. Sam, you have to be very calculated. Wengine, you, it's like you're plucking them, plucking them out of the fire. And I like what you've talked about. Using, we used words to slander, but now uh, on the other hand, we use words, but now words of affirmation to encourage someone who has been uh, heartbroken. Ashley, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Madam Nancy, for that. Um, and I was just looking for that verse that Bishop uh, has quoted to us a few times um, when you're talking about edification. And we, yeah, we need to ask ourselves if whatever words we're speaking uh, edifying the other person, even ourselves, you know, at the end of the day. So let's quickly um, move to exaggeration because we want to be very judicious with the time that uh, we've been allocated. And um, exaggeration, this is quite interesting, you know, um, because a lot of us fall victim, <laughs> fall victim to this. This is basically um, embellishment of the truth or of a scenario to make it look bigger or mightier than it actually is, you know. Uh, usually says we took a ground in different, you know. Um, we see examples where news, um, newsmen and newswomen, they embellish the truth by, um, what's, it, what's the word called? It's um, sensationalization, you know, of headlines um, that are going to capture people's attention when they're actually not the truth, maybe not 100% truth. Um, we also see this on social media with ourselves and even with our friends. Um, social media tends to present a picture that is not true sometimes. You know, no one's going to post about the worst parts of themselves on social media unless you're a psychopath, to be honest. But we see this where people post pictures that have been embellished, you know, the filters and all these kind of things. And uh, in, in, in the hope of attracting or presenting a different, a better image of yourself, better because it's, what is, um, it's not the truth. Um, and also we see this when, this is Mark's point, I will say, this is not what I, I did, but it seems that Mark uh, had a say in this one. He says, when a guy is wooing a lady and ends up overselling himself, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so maybe Mark, you want to explain, but um, yeah, overselling yourself. So the question that I would like to ask Mackenzie is this, what are the consequences of giving an exaggerated version of yourself? What is what is the consequence? Um, this is uh, I don't know how to explain it, but exaggeration is quite uh, it's it's wrong, yes. But hmm, I remember someone was I used to ask someone, why do you keep on telling things as you say them? And it's like in this life, you just have to encourage people. Eh? They are not quite there, but you need to. So <laughs> I think I'm speaking to Mark's point here. Eh? So <laughs> uh, this wooing, you just keep causing encouragement. 
Yeah, and um, sometimes it gives the wrong impression that I think where, that's where the biggest problem is, the wrong impression where you find someone makes a decision based on information that is not true. And um, some people don't take it kindly. There's those who will brush it off just uh, loosely, but some will not take it kindly. Some would be discouraged. And uh, also I think with, with a lot of social media, there are a lot of lies, exaggeration borders lying. There's a lot of lies and these lies, are, uh, people are basing their lies on these lies. And um, one of the saddest things about these exaggerations is there's an increase of depression, there's an increase in uh, suicide, there's an increase in uh, even we'll say theft and a lot of wrongdoings based on this. You look at my social media, you think what I have posted on that one day or on those two seconds of my life is what my life is all about. So you start comparing yourself where you are and uh, what you're seeing. And this um, sometimes makes you think that, um, it makes you start thinking that things, either you get discouraged or things are not as are. And I think that is where the problem is. So based on that, it's still, it's still a problem, yeah? Overselling yourself. And uh, sometimes you live a lie, which is, um, which is not good. I would say that, yeah, it really borders, uh, it really borders lying. Sometimes it looks like uh, just a joke that someone is creating or something easy, but it could, it could cause a lot of trouble and a lot of uh, heartache and a lot of issues in the society and even in the church as a whole. Yeah, they say fake it till you make it, but sometimes uh, it doesn't work like that, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Mary Mackenzie, for that. Let me just uh, go through some of the comments that I'm seeing here. Ha, Bethany is, is saying gossip. This is a very good definition of gossip. Uh, Ati, let me share with you something so that we pray about it. Ha, really, really. Ha. Very nice, uh, Bethany. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for that. I'm seeing um, Arthur, brother Arthur Amolo. Uh, gossip, biblically, biblically, gossip is sharing information that ought not to be shared. It may or may not uh, be, true. be true. Thank you so much, uh, Rosemary. Wangoi for, for, for joining in. Thank you, Kate Juma, I can see you. Uh, Sister Joyce, thank you. Uh, uh, you're very consistent, by the way, on, uh, on, the, on, on this live chat. Thank you so much, I can see you, um, uh, Marion. Uh, Bishop is saying, Bishop Rutivi, I can see, I see you there. Bishop is saying, gossip, slander, and exaggeration are fruits of the tongue. What does the scripture say about taming the tongue? We're going to look at a very uh, long passage of scripture from uh, the book of James. Uh, and then uh, something else Bishop has said, Proverbs chapter 6. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Also, Bishop has raised a concern that the boy child is uh, not featuring in the, in, the, in the chat room. Boy child, we are going to deal with you with the... Uh, the rest of the pointers that uh, that we have. So, um, Jackie, I'd like to indulge you in this. Um, now, exaggeration. There's a tendency that um, what uh, someone will present as the truth may not have the desired outcome. For instance, when you look at the spies that were sent um, uh, by Moses, I think it was uh, Caleb and uh, Joshua, uh, we saw uh, the their counterparts went and brought an exaggerated uh, report. You know, they said, oh, these guys are giants. We're like uh, grasshoppers and whatnot. And these guys, they felt like the, the truth, the truth will, will um, you know, will have them, you know, do something uh, that is contrary to, to their will. So there's that issue of um, the truth not having the desired uh, outcome that one would wish to have, thus result into exaggerating. So Jackie, what is your make on that uh, as far as uh, exaggeration is concerned, this fear of, of, of the truth? Jackie? I, I think I'll start by saying that uh, the truth 
is always the best because the truth has only one version. Exager uh, exaggeration, as you may call it, but it's still like a lie, has several versions. Because if, 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 for instance, today someone says something is an exaggeration, tomorrow people find out it's an exaggeration. It may, it may need to, he or she may need to come up with another statement to cover up for what he said yesterday. So I think uh, for me, how to deal with it is just to encourage people to say things as they are. It may not be pleasing to the ears. Uh, it may not be what people want to hear, but it's basically the truth. I work in a public office, not to, to, to slander concerning public offices, but when, <laughs> but when now it comes to like, now we are in the year of election. You hear people making so many promises, you're like, huh? You utafanya kutoko api? Because we already have a strategic plan laid ahead for the nation. So you, you keep on thinking these people are following these people because they have been told they'll do one, two, three, four, five, six things. It, 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 as Mary says, they say they, they are giving people hope. But you see, this is like, we know from the Bible, hope deferred. What does it do to the heart? It makes the heart weary. So you are moving people from hopelessness to weariness. So for me, saying the truth, it may not be encouraging. It may not be, yeah, that is the truth, but it's basically the truth. That is what I, 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 I will say, like we should always endeavor to say the things as the, as the way they are, they may not be pleasing, but at least they'll not give people false hope. Uh, Jackie, um, thank you. <laughs> I think Jackie has very blunt comments on this, so you need to <laughs> you need to answer all these questions and help us here because you know some of us are not the best. <laughs> I'll say that. So um, Bishop, on the comment section says exaggeration <laughs> is speaking evangelically, <laughs> evangelistically actually. <laughs> so um, Bishop, thank you for <laughs> remaining consistent um, and. Marion says we had 3,000 people in the tent and there were 50 people. Is this exaggeration or encouragement? So that's a question that I would like Madam Nancy to take. <laughs> Is this exaggeration or encouragement? Especially for event management people, they understand uh, they're catching my drift. Um, also, Marion says, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, Pastor Mike, thank you for joining us. Pastor Mike says, speaking in faith, Marion. So, um, Sister Nancy, I'd like you to speak about this. Is it when you exaggerate a little bit in some situations, are you, enc are you encouraging someone or is it wrong? Should you not, um, you know, give someone, you know, sometimes in companies, you see in their websites, we have 50 plus years of experience in providing this particular service. And... Uh, guilty as just because the more they the better they look the better you know the outcome is for your business but um so sister nancy very um briefly could you just talk about this a little bit before we close <laughs> actually thank you everyone I, I think there's such a thin line and uh for me, uh, the way it's coming out, there are two there are two approaches or aspects to this. There's the whole question of a, a Christian in the marketplace, and uh, as we have heard already, uh, exaggeration is giving false hope. So when you'll say we had this number of people in this event, clearly you have you have excited somebody and they are looking forward to it. What happens when this person comes? to that event next time, and you have two people. What happens to the brand going forward? So in my view, I feel uh, taking, saying things as they are is more important and can give you a sure foundation of building. Rather than lying, then you end up destroying the whole, the whole brand that is now a Christian in the marketplace. A Christian in church. When 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 you want to exaggerate even the sermon, you know the modern day sermon, the one that has to attract numbers. 
at the end of the day, have you, have you, have you added to the body of Christ when eventually these people get to know, really, you are not taking them to the truth because we, it is also written that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The moment they get, come to the knowledge of the word of God, which eventually they will, are they going to believe to stand or will you be drawing them apart from the word of God? So for me, from the word go, you are safer saying things as they are, such that people know from the word go. Because again, exaggeration have, have destroyed businesses, exaggeration have destroyed relationships. Even when you are dating, you know, this, this man will say so many things. When they get home, and that is where I think most of the issues begin. You know, you are not what you presented. You are not what you promised. And there is nothing that you promised on the table. So I feel starting on, on, on a false note, it, it's, a wrong, it's a wrong foundation for me. Thank you. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ladies, for, for the insights. Uh, you're talking about, uh, Madam Nancy, you know, if, you know what, what will people say of the brand, of your brand and of your reputation when they come and see that any other things ground are very different. Hi, the chat room is, I think all of you guys should have just been on this, uh, on this panel. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Pastor Mike, brother. Pastor Isaac Jerry, I have to read this. Uh, this is all the way from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There is exaggeration that is intended to encourage. There's also exaggeration that makes weak. All this has consequences at the end of the day. That's why the truth remains better than anything. And uh, Sister Joyce says the truth will always, will always and will always stand. Uh, ladies, uh, uh, thank you so much for having made time uh, to, to join us today. I'd like us to make uh, this prayer and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so to all our viewers, let us uh, uh, have this as a prayer that, that we make, okay? Then in the coming, in the coming uh, weeks, in the near future, we are going to have the men. Bishop has asked, where are the men? We are going to have the men uh, discuss uh, criticism, lying, cursing, and blasphemy. So let me share my screen at this point, and we make this uh, our prayer as we close. So there we go. I hope uh, you can uh, see it. Yeah, so let us uh, just uh, read together from wherever you are. Let's go, Psalm 19, 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Yeah, you know how to, you, you're just waiting to, to, to spread that false information. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Then verse 14, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Ladies and the gentlemen who are online, thank you so much uh, for having tuned in. That was our, that was our uh, closing, closing prayer. And I trust that um, the fellowship is going to be strengthened and encouraged even if you feel rebuked, it is okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, this is a chastisement to, to be able to um, have uh, the Lord heal us and make sure that, as Bishop said, we be built on that sure and firm foundation. So, ladies, uh, Ningependa, you just wave to the uh, audience and tell them goodbye. So, thank you so much, uh, Madam Nancy, Mary Mackenzie. Uh, um, Jackie, it's been a pleasure. Ashley, our very able uh, co-host, thank you so much. Bishop Rutivi, thank you for not um, encouraging, bringing in exaggeration, bringing in entertaining gossip. You know, you have, you would, if you would wish, if you wished, you would have been, you know, those men of God who say, hey, mtapona, you know, you bring, uh, you know, anointing, you sell anointing oil, you sell, I don't know, water as Pastor Jonathan said from, the, from Jericho, but you don't do that. And that is something that 
is really establishing us. So church, let us rally behind uh, the vision that is behind this uh, ministry. Uh, Bishop Sim to a Masarakasi, Namadrama, and that is what will help us to be to be established. Okay. So if you have been gossiped about, if you've been slandered about, uh, may you find it in your heart to to forgive, so that the fellowship ipate ku ku endelea. So uh, without further ado. I'd say the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you.